Hi everybody, this is Marshy, the author of 13 Interactive Challenges to Self-Discovery and Grandparent Memories Hard. So, this is part two of how to start over at 40 and 50 plus, all right? Now, in step one, we talked about the six inches up here. And I had in the links below Jim Rohn's um, famous quotes and Life Begins at 40. This is a rare edition. It's a collector's item and I hold it very dear. Okay, so I'm just going to open up and see what happens. Um, life Begins at 40 for those who have something to live for and in and by. Right? Now, I have something very encouraging for you, okay? So, but before I get into that, if I bring any value to you, entertainment to you, please like, subscribe, put your comments down, um, share your journey with me. I'm being transparent with you, and I hope you'll be transparent with me. Okay, so like comment click on a link do something right um so as i was telling you at age 40 i had this mantra if i don't do it now when am i going to do it right if not now when if not now when when am i going to do it now encouraging news all right so when this when this book came out in 1932, right, and here it is, the inscription, and I put mine down in 2009, right, because that's what was happening for me at age 40. But 1933, this, this uh, person got this book October 11th. So, um, how cool is that? All right, so, but in 1932 was when this book was written. So I need to, uh, let's, let's look at what the average lifespan was. Here we're talking about life begins at 40. The average lifespan in 1930 for men was 58 years old and 62 for women. Let me repeat that. 58 for men, 62 for women. Well, now it's changed. The average lifespan, according to the Social Security Administration, says, hey, in this new millennium, men is 77 and women 79 years old. Now, we already know that there are people living way into their 90s. I mean, I've got a friend that's saying that her mother is driving at 95 and going and blowing and doing. And I have another friend that their dad was driving at 92 and going dancing and dating and just living a good old life. You need to understand, 40 and 50, we are just getting started, right? We are just getting started. So if if you feel this nudge that you're just sick and tired of being sick and tired, bet on yourself. I believe in you, right? Just do it, right? Just do it. Is it going to be easy? No. It's easy for me to sit here and tell you to do it. So what did I do? This is what part two is about. What did I do? Well, I made a decision was the first thing I did, right? I read some books. I made a decision to start M&M Biz Solutions, right? And they call me Chef Marshy because my background's hospitality, and I taught food safety, and I was a culinary adjunct professor. So I was like, okay, I have that skill set. And then I had QuickBooks. I knew how to do QuickBooks and accounts reconciliation and different things, bookkeeping, right? I knew how to do that. And um, so I was like, 
okay, I can be in a kitchen or, you know, food safety. I know how to do that. I know how to create curriculum. So, my business card with the $149, I did three things. And I'll tell you what worked and what didn't. The first thing I did is I put an ad in the paper. I lived in this very uh, small community of 5,000 people. And I put an ad in the paper. Right? We'll see if anybody would nibble on bookkeeping or anything like that. Well, sure enough, nobody. That was wasted $79. Right? That was not a good investment. <laughs> it was not a good investment. And I was like, okay. The second thing I did is I joined the chamber. Now, that has paid off and paid off big. Now, I have to, to warn you about the chamber. You get what you put into the chamber. So, this, so I, I, I'll circle right back around to the chamber just to tell you how much of an impact it actually had in my business, okay? And then the third thing I did is I went and got business cards. Now, I've gone through, I don't know, five, six different revisions on my business cards. And on that first business card, I had everything but the kitchen sink on it that I could do. I could do technical writing, I could teach, I could speak, I could, I could do books, I could do accounts payable, I could do accounts receivable. I had everything on there that I could possibly do. Now, I have a degree in hospitality, hotel restaurant management, right? But I also am fully licensed. Now, what does that mean, I'm fully licensed? I have my life license, I have my securities license, my VA license, um, property and casualty license. So I am a fully licensed um, representative, okay? And I have been now for almost 30 years. So the thing is, is I had some skills, right? I had um, things I could do. Because in my career, I've had three plates spinning at every time, right? So while I was working at the hotel, right, I was doing that. Then I was teaching, but I was also helping people with their financial services. These clients that I was helping it with my financial services in my 20s, guess what? They're my, still my clients, okay? And the teaching kind of fell off, but I ended up creating a business where I started teaching because that's what I love to do. I love to speak because I'm a speaker, right? But I also love teaching and educating. And that's kind of what this YouTube channel is about, is me bringing you tips, trips, <laughs> trips. I've got trip on the mind. I'm going on vacation and I'm going for two weeks and I'm excited. <laughs> so it's tips and tricks and hacks in your personal and your business life. So again, you'll never know what you're going to get from me because it's what's put on my heart. So back to, you know, starting over at 40. So I had this business card, everything but the kitchen sink on it. And I was like, okay. So I'm a woman of faith. All right. And I was sitting here going, oh, man, I don't know how I'm going to pay my rent. I, I, I mean, Lord, what am I going to do? Because the Lord uprooted me. That was the other thing. The Lord uprooted me from where I was living. I didn't have any friends. I knew nobody in this community. And I lived 15 minutes from there because where I ended up at was uh, Grant Shoals out at the lake. And I had, and it's a population of like 1,500 people. Nobody. Zero. And I was like, what am I going to do? Um, so, I was trying to do this temp job. I was trying to go for a job interview. And I couldn't find it in Cottonwood Shores, which is on the other side of the lake. And I stopped at a realtor's office and said, hey... Can you help me get to such and such? And she said, what do you do? So I told her what I did. I gave her my business card, my, my 
financial card and I said, here you go. And she goes, oh, I need you. To, I need you right now. I need to talk to you right now. And I said, ma'am, I, I will come back. I promise I will come back and help you. Basically, what had happened is her, her dad died and she had to get all this paperwork out in FedEx that day. And she didn't know what she was looking at and she didn't know what she was signing. So I was like, okay, I'll come back. Well, I found the place. I did the interview. I didn't get the job. But I went back because I am a person of my word. You need to understand, if you're going to have a business, you better do what you say you're going to do. Because all you've got is your integrity. All right? So... I helped this woman and I ended up doing her life insurance okay now I don't believe that the Lord puts you somewhere and you're not supposed to be all right and if this offends some of you I'm sorry but I'm really not because you can switch off you can do whatever you don't have to sit here and listen to me right so that sale paid my rent down to the penny. So, to me, my faith from the beginning, I know I'm on the right track. Now, the other thing you need to understand when you go out and you have been you feel like it's just eating at you and it's it, it it just it's knocking right if you're a person of faith you need to understand your blessings chase you down that lady was begging me chasing me down saying no i need you to help me i need you to help me if i would have ignored her and and just kept on going i would have missed my blessing okay so that's one thing. So I did the ad in the paper. I lost my shirt. That that was that wasn't good. I joined the chamber. That was a positive thing. And my business card. My business card, Amanda, Amanda Ramirez, um, helped me. Now you'll see if you look up this book, right? Um, an, Amanda and I mainly Amanda, <laughs> created the cover, all right? And this one too, all right? So I'm going to give you a shout out to her because she has her own graphic design, right? And she left the print company and moved off, but she continued to help me way after. So the Lord puts you with people that he wants the blessings chase you down all right so if you go to this link it says that there's some other authors on here I'm the author of the book but Ritzy Texan asked me to write this book for them so their name is listed and then Amanda's name's listed because I wanted Amanda to get some accolades all right so there's that. Now, those links are down below if you want the book. Um, so the business cards, that was helpful. And I met Amanda. So that, I've had this relationship this whole time for 15 years. Okay? So that's cool. So like, if I write another book, guess who I'm going to call? I'm going to go, hey Amanda, uh, I got a project for you right and if you haven't noticed I have a theme right they're butterflies everything I do has a butterfly because of the transformation now the chamber let me explain to you a lot of people say well why go to the ribbon cutting why do this why go to the social why do any of that let me tell you why 
I went to my first event with the chamber because you got to understand, I knew no one. All right. So I met a lady. Her name was Lynn, Lynn Larson. And she had a business called Baby Cake Truffles. She hired me to come in and help her do some consulting work. I was like, okay, no problem. I charged her $64. My check is right there. It's framed. You can't see it, but it's right there to remind me. So I couldn't cash it. I couldn't cash the check. I went to the bank and I couldn't cash the check. And I was like, what am I going to do? I can't cash the check. So anyway, I met her at the chamber. And all I made was $64. But I would go in there and visit her because she was such a delightful person. Right? And I just loved her to death. And, oh, and her baby cake truffles were really good. I was kind of sad when she stopped doing it. But she called me five years later. She said, Marcy, I've got something for you to do. I need you to do this. I'm like, I, I don't, I, I, no, no, mm, mm, no, mm, don't want to do it. She goes, oh, I'll take you to lunch. Oh, oh, shoot. She found my Achilles heel. And she goes, I have everything in the folder. I want you to take over doing his books. You're going to be starting from scratch. I'm like, uh, what? What do you want me to do? I, I don't know. Okay. I have been with this client 11 years now. So I've been with them 11 years. Do you think that that has paid me more than what my chamber membership was? <laughs> yeah. Did it take five years to come back around? Yes. Did I get other business while I was doing the chamber? Y yes, because I use the conference room for teaching class. So I highly recommend that you join the chamber because that's where the business community is and that's where you meet people. And it's important because you don't know who knows someone that can help you. And again, I was blessed because when she called me, I had just got a phone call from, per, excuse me, Performance Food Group saying, sorry, our contract has ended. And I was teaching for them when I was traveling. And I was like, oh crap, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Oh no. But when one door shuts, another one opens. You need to understand the Lord's got you in the palm of his hand. So that's one of the things that I did is I got business cards. I got a newspaper ad. Don't recommend it. And I got, I joined the chamber. The chamber has paid off. Now, the other thing that I did is because I teach is I said, okay, you know, chamber, can I use this conference room? And they said, sure. So what happened is I had to go drive almost two hours to go see a client. And I went and saw him and I stopped to have lunch. Okay. Now, I stopped to have lunch and these people were like, hey, what do you do? I was like, here's my card. Here's my card. I was all proud of my card, right? That Amanda designed. And uh, I said, and I also teach the food manager certification. And they say, you do? We need that. And I was like, you do? And they said, yes. Um, where are you? I said, I'm in Marble Falls. And they said, well, we'll come to you and we'll teach class. And we'll have class if you'll come. I, they said, how many people? I said, uh, however many you want. <laughs> so they brought five people to class. And I started teaching 
the food manager certification. Now that's online and I have created curriculum for the state of Wisconsin, Ohio, and Minnesota. And that's how I started my business. And this is why you see a chef. You see the chef because I'm a chef, right? And you go, well, how are you a chef? I'm a chef because I taught culinary arts and they, and I've taught food prep, pastry, um, uh, menu planning, uh, sanitation and other in, in a plethora of other courses. And so they call me Chef Mercy and I just ran with it and said, okay, here you go. So depending on what day it is depends on what I'm doing. So I'm either called Chef Mercy, I'm either a speaker and an author, right? The life coach, because that's, you know, uh, what I do. But then also I'm a financial, a licensed financial representative where I help people and you see my plaques in the back of the wall. So the thing is, is when I talk to you and I'm giving you personal and business, I'm giving it to you from a lot of experience, from a lot of different perspectives because I understand the numbers of the game as well as the emotional, mental part of the game are personal. And I try to bring that to you through this channel. Okay, if I brought any value and you're still with me 21 minutes later, mwah, thank you. If I could just hug you, I would. Thank you so much. And uh, if you actually did through, can you put down in the comment 21? Just write 21. If you, if you don't want to say anything, at least let me know that there was somebody out there.